We've partitioned R theta and R intervals, illustrated what it means to work within this partition, and considered a typical area increment A sub IJ, where the sample point is Ri star theta sub J star. To construct our integral, we need then to represent the product of the function f of r theta and the area. We multiply the value of the function times the area. We get our contribution to the integral. We can recall from previous discussion that the area of an integral, uh, of, of an interval uh, defined in polar coordinates between two values of r and two values of theta depends on the r value at the sample point as well as the delta theta and delta r. The delta r is this dimension of our integral and the r star delta theta where r star is our sample value of r determines the lengths of these two sides giving us an approximate rectangle whose area is r star delta theta this dimension multiplied by delta r this dimension. The area of this interval is therefore delta A sub IJ, which equals the radius times delta theta. The radius is R sub I star delta theta multiplied by delta R. The value of the function is F evaluated at our sample point, r sub i star, theta sub j star. So that the contribution to the integral from this interval, contribution to the integral of f with respect to a is f of r i star theta j star multiplied by r delta a i j, our area of the i j th interval, which is r i star delta theta delta r. So we can now construct our integral. Our region runs over the, well our region is the region described by these inequalities which are partitioned as we see here giving us the contribution to the integral of our typical area increment so that our total is the sum from, let's say, i equals 1 to n, the sum from j equals 1 to m of f of r sub i star theta sub j star delta r sub i star delta r delta theta and that shouldn't be a delta r sub i star. I'm going to have to repair that. Okay, I've made that uh, delta into multiplication. Now the expression is correct. And working somewhat informally, I'm simply going to say that that approaches the integral of the integral of f of r theta Here's our f of r theta times r. Again, when we take our limits, letting our delta r and delta theta all approach zero, our r sub i star and theta sub j star get squeezed down to just r and theta values. So that these three symbols just become as we see them. And then that's uh, times dr. 
and this integral is the integral with respect to r, and then we have the integral with respect to theta. What are the limits on the integrals? We just look back at our partition and see that theta was, that our partition for theta, uh, we partitioned the interval from 0 to theta over 2. We partitioned the r interval from 0 to 3. So that our r integral goes from the endpoints of our r partition from 0 to 3, and our theta goes from 0 to pi over 2. Recalling that f of r theta is 1 over 1 plus r, this integral then becomes integral 0 to pi over 2, the integral from 0 to 3 of 1 over 1 plus r times r dr d theta. The inner integral becomes the integral of r over 1 plus r. This is a fairly easy integral to calculate, and we'll do that in the very next clip.